to me, leadership means empathy. <laughs> and often we hear this word and we kind of misunderstand it. And this thing around really looking through a different lens, you are required to do that as a leader. It is necessary for you to do that as a leader. So when we talk about empathy in that capacity, you are not leading people who are yourself. You're not leading clones. And that's not what you should strive to do either. Make people like you. What you should strive to do is get into a space of real understanding, which leads you intentionally into the discomfort Leadership is about often putting yourself in the firing line, but inviting colleagues to see what it looks like, <laughs> you know, because when you are leading by example and you're leading with empathy and you're leading from a place of, and I know it sounds cliche, but leading from a place of love and not from shame or guilt, it makes the process much easier and much more beneficial for everybody who's in your team. When we talk about words like strong, you know, strong leadership, brave leadership, bold leadership. I think often we, again, misunderstand what that means and what that looks like. Strength comes in so many different variations. Strength isn't always about being the loudest or about being the most brash or the most argumentative. That's not always what strength looks like or how it shows up. And so when we're thinking about empathy and we're thinking about some of those skills that we acquire as leaders, also recognizing that we should never stop learning that as leaders we are learning from the people who are in our teams and we must take that on gracefully because I think if we're thinking about leading from a place of arrogance and knowing it all it doesn't help anybody so for me leadership is about empathy it's about looking through different lenses and it's not about wanting to replicate yourself it's not about clones it's about really valuing that individuality that people bring in your team I, I want to piggyback on that idea of empathy in, in one second. Um, I, I was offered this question, and so I had a chance to sort of think about it. Um, and this idea of a leader, I think, has a vision or has or is trying to further a vision of of where from wherever they're sitting um, and taking responsibility for setting the tone and doing that, which means that they have clarifying conversations about what that looks like and sounds like they're they're pretty clear about it when you you know they're they're clear about where they're going and then as as Liz said the empathy piece I would call that their other focused there was egocentric and then I learned from a colleague Bob Garmston the concept of being allocentric which is other focused so we have this vision and then how might I support and encourage and challenge people to live to it? I need to know where they're coming from and I need to be other focused about it. There's this, um, this I love, I was an English teacher, so you'll have to forgive me. I have a lot of quotes. Um, there was a quote by John Vasconcellos, who is a, a politician, a congressman here in, in, my, in my state, who said that if we're gonna be the leaders and move people forward, was very powerful. We're going to need to be both hospice worker and midwife. And what I loved about that, and most people did not sign up in leadership to also run something, lead something, be a grade level lead, an administrator, whatever. And then hospice worker, I didn't sign up for that. But hospice workers, we got to let go of what didn't work. We've got to unlearn things. And there's a lot of grief of letting go and to sit with people and to understand that they are going through something, but then also support and challenge them to move forward and to be a midwife of kind of work with them to get to that next spot and, and know where they are and support them at their level or at their, at their spot, be other focused. So to me, hold the vision have the clear clarifying conversation, be allocentric and supportive. And then what does it mean to be a leader? You have worked on yourself to be able to do all that. And that requires practices. I don't know if it's meditation or being in support systems with people, but it is not easy work to be a leader. So this idea of create developing in yourself an equanimity or a capacity to withstand some of that, as as Liz was mentioning, kind of the resistance 
because not everybody loves change. And as, as Becky, you mentioned, if we make change the habit, that's not, that's hard, right? To make change the habit or to be in a, develop a culture of feedback where, okay, I'm getting feedback all the time. That requires us to have a, some practices. And so um, that's, then people say, I don't have time for that, right? You don't not have time for it. Because if you're going to be this person who's holding the vision and then being other focused, we need to be, to be centered. And so those are the things that my immediate thought was. Also, one last thing, doesn't mean that you're the person in authority. Being a leader can happen from every seat. So that's another piece where I kept thinking, does she mean formal positional leadership or does she mean leadership? from anywhere. So I just wanted to mention that I was never the head of anything in my job and decided from where I sat, I would write a few books. So 